Well, good evening, I'll, everyone. I'll, I'll, I am Z Scalot. I'm running for the clerk of the court, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I've been in Stafford 26 years. I've been married 28 years. I have two children, one in high school, one in middle school. I graduated from George Mason University with a degree in criminal justice. I was a, started my career as a caseworker for paternity support, um, child support, in Prince George's County, Maryland. From there, I became a DC police officer where I was handpicked for a specialized unit called the Repeat Offender Unit. When I left the police department, I was a desk sergeant in narcotics and special investigation. From there, I joined the Virginia Division of Forensic Science, where I was director of security and the forensic police. From there, I took time off to have children, and I started my career again as a magistrate in the 15th Judicial District. From there, I am now a federal contractor where I oversee 25 other federal contractors every day. My experience is over 30-some years. It is a broad experience, and I want you to be aware of that. It is very broad. Every day I am met with challenges. I have budgets to deal with. I have manpower restraints to deal with, and I deal with them in a management and leadership role. This is what I do. I am a manager and I am a leader. And I feel that's what Stafford County needs to represent them going into the future. Thank you. You don't have to worry about cutting off your opponent. <laughs> this race. So I like that. Uh, so the first question is, should you win the election, what would your typical day be for you and for the rest of the members in the court <coughs> court office? Because I've been in the court system for so many years, I'm very familiar with what you have to do. Usually you have a docket. You have to make sure that docket is ready. You have to make sure that docket is accurate. If you have jurors coming in, if you have a trial going on, you have to make sure that the, the jurors are there. If you have interpreters coming in, you have to make sure those interpreters check in. If you have attorneys, you have to make sure they're, they're in court because if I see some police officers here. Court, preparing court is a very difficult thing. And I have to make sure my staff is on task. As a manager, that's what you do. You make sure that everybody is ready to go for whatever challenges you are met with daily. And like I said, I do that now daily. And as a federal contract, I can't tell you exactly what I do, but I can tell you this much. I deal with judges, clerks, and attorneys on a daily basis. And I'm pulled from many different directions. So um, my staff will be able to deal with whatever, whatever comes their way in terms of having people coming in and filing briefs and that sort of thing, and the public coming in to get um, information. I'm by myself, so <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm keep myself it uh, balanced. And I'm gonna I'm gonna give the candidate about a few seconds here to kind of get her voice, uh, which she would have otherwise have, to remind everyone that we have two more candidate forums. We've broken them up this year. The next forum is Monday night, October 26th, right here at seven o'clock, and that forum is for the Board of Supervisors races. We have two contested Board of Supervisors races, one in the Rock Hill District, one in the Griffiths Widewater District, and all those candidates will be here. Uh, I'll save my next announcement for after the next question. So this question is, why did you decide to run for this office? What motivates you to seek this office? I have been in this field for a very long time. I have worked tirelessly. I work 16 hour days a lot of times. My son is here and he will attest to that. Sometimes we don't see mom all the time. Living in Stafford for 26 years, I love Stafford County. When I was a police officer, I would work, um, when I was in Rope, I would work 16 hour days and I would drive from DC to Stafford County because I found this place and I fell in love with it. 
My experience is so broad and so unique. I knew that qualified me for this position. And I feel that I can give back to my community. That's what you do. When you, when you put yourself in this position, it's because you have a passion for it. And my passion is to do something for the community, to show my kids that this is what you do. My father was a principal. My mother was a business teacher. And they gave back to the community. And it's only fitting I live here. I have the experience. Why am I not giving back when I can? And so that motivated me. That really motivated me to do this with my broad and unique experience. So I'll make one more announcement. The last <laughs> political forum is on Thursday night, October 29th. And that is for the school board races. All three uh, school board races are contested. George Washington, Griffith Widewater, and uh, also Rock Hill. So those candidates will be here Thursday night, October 29th, 7 o'clock here. So I'd encourage you to get the word out. Our next question uh, deals with first a question, and then if it's true, how would you deal with it? The question is, at least one person has the sense that our jewelry pools do not match the diversity and the makeup of our county. Uh, do you believe that to be so? And if it is so, how would you fix it? And if, it, and, and, uh, if it's fine, how would you make sure it doesn't go awry? So diversity in jury pools is the question. Well, obviously that person that asked that question has to realize the clerk of the court does not make policy. We get the pool and we send out the notices. And who shows up is what we get. Then they go to court and the judge, what he does is a bordier. And he decides based on what they say if they are eligible to serve on the jury. Okay. So in answer to that question, I have no control over that. We have a, a diverse community, and it is based on you have to be a rep, you have to be a citizen, uh, citizen of this county for six months. You have to be a registered voter in the in the state for a year. So the, all those things go into a factor. But as a clerk, you have no control over that. You just hope that that's what happens, but it doesn't always happen. In the federal system, you can see diverse groups come in, but it not necessarily the um, panels is going to be that way. Like I said, they do a bordier, and some people opt out because they have family um, commitments, and they can't do it. So you just hope, but it just doesn't work that way. But in answer to them, clerks do not make policy. They do not have that authority. They just go by, they just go by what the law is. They do not make any interpretations. Thank you. I'm sure that clarified it for the person who, uh, who asked that. It certainly did for me. Um, if elected, what changes, if any, would you propose to your office's budget? for resources, resource allocation, and resource uh, priorities. Any increases, decreases, or changes to the budget? The last budget that I, I saw was um, $1,700,000. First of all, my first day, I want to get in there and talk to the employees and see what their work level is. Where, what are they doing? Because Stafford County has grown. Stafford County has, when well, we have 130, 136,000 um, people in this county. And I would want to see what we're doing. I, I am a stickler for detail. So I want to know, maybe we're ordering too many staplers. <laughs> maybe... Maybe I have um, Miss Thomas over here doing something, working extra hours. She doesn't need to work when I have Miss Johnson over here that can take over that caseload. So what you do as a manager, you go in and you see how we're we using this money, and where can we take take away from 
making sure we're getting that service done every day, which I say I, I have to do every day, and making sure that we still have enough funds if we need to do something else. <coughs> so you have to look at all of those areas, and that's what a manager does. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to go over it with a fine tooth comb and say, what are we doing? What do we do not need to be doing? And what can we do to move forward? Because I want Stafford County to clerk's office to be recognized. I want you to come in there and I want you to feel like you have gone into an office that wow, they're on top of things. They, they know what they're doing, and I feel comfortable that the job is being done like it's supposed to. I hope that answers your question, sir. The last question we have somewhat dovetails on that. Um, what fresh ideas, innovations, and changes do you have in mind right now, and can you walk us through those? My fresh idea is I, I'm a public person, public service. I've been a public <coughs> servant for years. I got in this race and I have a platform. One of my platforms is customer service. I believe if you come into that office, you should be met with respect, you should be met with courtesy, and you should be met with a person who is very knowledgeable about their job. The area when you walk up to that counter, and hopefully in the future that will be more open because I think that makes a person feel alienated when you walk in there and you're standing at this, this wall. But people are going to be professional. You're not going to walk in there and see anyone eating. You're not going to see anyone just slacking back. That is customer service. If you call that office and you want to talk to someone, you're going to be able to talk to someone. And you may be surprised that I will answer the phone because that's what, you have to be involved. If you're a manager, you have to know what's going on. Technology. I want the residents of Stafford County not to come in that office all the time. I get on VRE at 5.15 every morning. And I would like, if I did take off, to go to my, my son's soccer practice. So, and I think all the residents in this county would like to be able to do things online. If they can't, they can come into the office, but it should only take them five minutes because that's usually how long it takes to do filings or get questions. Flexible hours. I believe in flexible hours because we're a growing community. In 2020, we, our population, based on the Virginia Census Bureau, will be 178,000 people. We have to be ready. A manager thinks ahead. That's what I do. We think ahead. So I want to be ready. When that happens, I'm already going to the next level. Because in 2030, Stafford County is supposed to grow to 244,000. So you have to look into the future. And this is what I want to do. I want Stafford County to be on the cutting edge of everything that we do. What I want everyone to remember about me is I'm a manager and I'm a leader. This is what I've done and this is what I will continue to do. The voters of Stafford County, has, they have a decision to make. It is your right. That is the way the Founding Fathers set this up. It's a constitutional office and it is selected. The person who goes into that office is elected by you. Experience. Experience is not familiarity with the job. The experience I have is very broad, but it's always been a management and leadership role. My um, opponent, and, and I want to keep this, I've met Ms. Stern, she's a very nice lady. And I understand Mr. Cater um, endorsed her. But the, the problem is, this is an electoral office. It is up to the citizens. Ms. Decatur doesn't have the priority, prerogative to nominate, to say that this Mrs. Stern should have that office. It is up to you. And what you will have, what I also want you to remember is my contract is to the residents of Stafford County. 
what I will do for the next eight years if I'm elected is work for you. I value whatever your opinions are. I want you to, to say what they are because what we fail to realize is people, when we get in this office, we just, in any office where you're elected, you're in there and you, you say, well, I don't have to do anything. I'm not like that. That is not what it's supposed to be about. It is supposed to be about respecting the people that put you in that office and doing whatever you can to make sure you live up to the responsibility that they have given you. I work off accountability, fairness, and efficiency. I'm well known for that. I'm very fair. I'm very honest. And I am very passionate when I go into a job. I believe in that. And I hope I can get your vote on November 3rd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.